Turn with me to Proverbs chapter 3. That's in the Old Testament. Proverbs chapter 3. And uh, I want to talk to you about my title to this message anyway is called Fuel Up, F-U-E-L, Fuel Up. I thought about calling it Oil Up, but that gives a connotation of, you know, suntan lotion. And I'm, not th I'm not talking about that kind of oil. I'm talking about the oil of the Lord, how we need to be filled with fresh oil. And we need to be close to the Lord in these days in which we're living. You see, if you can trust God in the mountaintops of your life, the high points of your life, then you should also be able to trust God at your lowest points. You know, I've seen some mountains this week and I've seen some valleys. And the mountains have their own special beauty. They have their own special uh, environment and their own special qualities, but so do the valleys. And life is not just one level ground, even though we think so because of where we live in the flatlands of Florida. Boy, this is flat country. People say, you know, I grew up in the Texas panhandle. You grew up in flat country. No, no, this is flat country. You got to get up on an overpass just to get a view. You know, and, and then they gripe at you because you stopped, you know. So it's not, you can't get, you get on top of a big bridge to look around. And then what do you see? You see flat and you, you see nothing but trees. That's why, you know, we don't drive out west anymore because from here on I-10, from here to Dallas is nothing but trees on either side of the highway. So what did you see on that long drive? trees and more trees so Ruth says I'm, I'm not doing that anymore if you want me to go we're flying so we fly over the, we fly over the trees amen but but we tend to think a lot of times that life is like where we live is just flat or it's just monotonous but that's not the case we know that we know that we we go from extremes we go from high highs to low lows and, uh, and we have to deal with our emotions and we have to deal with uh, our, our thoughts. We have to keep our thoughts uh, under control at all times because uh, life throws things at you. And so Proverbs 3, starting with verse 5, says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. And uh, when I was reading that, trust in the Lord with all thine heart, I, I hear the addendum there, at all times. We need, to, we need to learn at all times to trust in the Lord with all our heart. Now I was thinking on this when Ruth lost her uh, borrowed key card to the pool, and she goes into panic mode, and she's she's emptying her purse. She's looking everywhere. She's going on a bike ride. She's saying, "I'm gonna have to get on the bicycle and go on that bike ride. See if I dropped it along the way." And and she had done a few other things, and she's just she's being Ruth, and you know, and and she's you know apologizing already for losing their key and and then she's you know she said well I go you know she's planning on how she's going to pay back that hundred and fifty dollars how many houses am I going to have to clean you know to get that kind of assuming I wasn't going to help her at all you know and and so I'm, I'm thinking you know this is one of those times this is not a mountaintop this is kind of a valley uh, and a rocky one and so but her emotions were very female. Amen. You guys know what I'm talking about. Yeah. She had those. She she was she was emotional, and so you know I I, I patted her on the back and I said, "Now uh, cast all your cares upon the Lord." It's like she's never heard that before. You know how many of you know I I quote that scripture a lot because it's a command. And it says, cast all your cares upon the Lord, 
for He cares for you. Amen. And I said, if you if you cast your care of this over on the Lord, the Lord will take care of it. Because we were on our way to uh, go do something, and I forget what it was, but we were going to be gone. Oh, yeah, we were going to go to Starbucks and visit Ethan and take advantage of his discount. And uh, we were, you know, we were going somewhere to, you know, to have fun. Oh, we were going to, we were going to go to Starbucks, get us a, a drink at Starbucks, and then we were going to go to Popeye's and get some fried chicken, which Ruth, it was all for Ruth because she loves Popeye's. And so she, she was so caught up in losing this key, she wasn't going to enjoy any of that. And so I said, you know, let's, you need to, you need to let the Lord Watch over that key. Let the Lord handle it. And when we come back, we'll go to the pool. And maybe someone's in the pool that can go check the restroom and go, you know, see if you left it there. And because she couldn't get in because there was no one at the pool to let her in. And she had misplaced the only key. So she manages to suppress her feelings and she manages to cast her cares on the Lord. At least I thought she was. And it wasn't showing. And uh, and we go off and we have a good time. And then when we come back, there's someone at the pool. And so she asked him if they would go check the restroom. And guess what they found? The key. So she comes out all smiling and happy. I knew the Lord was going to take care of this. I, you know, you know how we get. But uh, but if you if you learn to if you learn to trust the Lord at all times. And discipline yourself when you're on a on a high mountain peak. Yes, That's good practice for the valleys. Sure is. Amen. Uh, so today, today you just need to practice trusting the Lord, putting your faith and confidence in the Lord, and know that the Lord is going to guide your steps. Yes. Hallelujah. Even if you're looking for something you lost, the Lord will guide your steps and take you to it. I remember one time I lost my phone and I couldn't find my phone. And that's very unusual for me. I don't lose things. I, I've got little things that I've had for 50 years. I, I just don't lose them. You know, I've got, I've got an ink pen, a cross pen, a, what, a gold cross pen that, that uh, my, my wife got me on our first anniversary in 1971. I've still got it. It's got my name on it. Amen. It's not the original ink, but I, you know, you can buy ink for those things. And, and uh, you know, I just don't lose things. But I lost my phone that day. Oh And I'm looking for it. And you know, uh, you, these these uh, cell phones are not cheap anymore, right? And I was looking for it and and couldn't find it anywhere. And 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 I heard the Lord say, "Well, don't you trust me?" And I said, "Yeah, I trust you." He said, "I said, Lord, I know you know where." And you know what he said to me? He said, get on your knees. And I'm thinking, oh, now, Lord, you want me to pray? I'm looking for my phone here. <laughs> but he wasn't telling me to pray. He's telling me to get on my knees. So I got on my knees and there at my bed, and there, there it was under the bed. He didn't say that your phone's under the bed. He just said, get on your knees. You know, the Lord doesn't, he's not going to speak to you uh, in the ways that you want him to. He's go, he because even in in when he's given instructions, he wants us to trust his instructions. Yeah. Amen. And a lot of times the Lord doesn't give instructions that are understandable to our, our our way of thinking. He just tells us to do something. And but if we will do what he says, even though we don't understand it, we are saying to him, "I am trusting you, Lord." to direct my path. Yeah. And He will do it every time. Amen? Amen. Now, so secondly, God has graciously opened His kingdom and His kingdom is a kingdom of courage. The kingdom of God is, is one that is, is a kingdom of lions. And, and, uh, and, you know, lions are courageous. Lions are bold. Amen? Uh, and it's for any of us who are weak 
and and uh, easily intimidated and easily get afraid people uh, we are maybe our weakness is because we just burdened down but he's he's opened he's opened his kingdom of courage and boldness to those that are weak isn't that pretty cool people who are naturally and and uh, predisposed to being timid and afraid and uh, and easily uh, 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 burdened down he says he says I'm opening the door to my courageous kingdom come on in and be a be a lion you little sheepies come on in and be a lion and so he he uh, he promises rest for our weary bodies Matthew 11 28 he says come unto me all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You know, so so the Lord, the Lord, when we trust the Lord, and we start putting our faith in the Lord, He opens up His kingdom strength, His kingdom courage, His kingdom boldness and bravery, and He offers us His rest. That's right. His rest. And He says, He says, you know, if you're going to labor and work at anything, labor to enter into My rest. You see, there's a rest for the people of God. For we cease our labors and we enter into the fruits of His labors. Right. Amen. Amen. Jesus says, my, my, my yoke is easy. My burden is light. Come on in. Come on in and, 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 and rest. And then in John 16, 33, He talks about how He has, he has single-handedly, Jesus has single-handedly overcome the world. And he holds the keys to the kingdom and the keys to a better life in his hands beyond our ability to comprehend and understand. He says, your eyes have not seen, your ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the heart that what God has prepared for those that love him and trust him. See if you if you learn to trust the Lord at all times, he's he's going to he's going to he's going to open up a life to you that only he holds the keys to. Isn't that cool John 16:33 he says these things have I spoken unto you that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. So the victor of the world, the one who has overcome the whole world, holds the keys to a better life for all of us. If we will put our trust in Him, we're gonna we're gonna live a more um, a more carefree life. But why? Because we cast our cares on Him. Amen. If you do that, then you're carefree. That's why we don't take care, Brother Bradley. We don't take care. <laughs> we cast our cares over on the Lord, the one who's overcome the world, the one who holds the keys to a better life. Thank God. Hallelujah. Now, in, in 1 John chapter 5, we find out that we're, we're living in, a, in a, a world of contrast. We're living in a time where there's antichrist, there's false prophets, false preachers. Uh, it's a perilous time, the Bible says. In the last days, there's going to be uh, trouble and peril and difficulty. You know, in the world, you're going to have tribulation, Jesus said. But, uh, and you know, so presently, we're existing in a dark world of sin, turmoil, treachery, and if we focus on those things, we're going to stumble and fall. You know, we were talking, a couple of us were talking before church, you know, about all the stuff that's going on in the world. And, uh, and if, you, if you feed on that and you meditate on that, you're going to become a very uh, uh, if not depressed, you're going to become a, a, an angry person. See, I, I know people that, you know, spend a lot of time driving, you know, maybe they're a truck driver, maybe they're an Uber driver or whatever, and they're on the road a lot. And, and so they listen to talk radio. 
And, uh, you know, I, I enjoyed listening to Rush Limbaugh. I liked Rush Limbaugh. And he came on every day for three hours. But I found out if I listened to him every day for three hours, I, I would become an angry man. Not because necessarily he was an angry man, but what he talked about made me angry. And if you spend all your time, you know, uh, even, you know, surely most of you have already fired Fox News and CBS and NBC and CNN and all. You, surely none of you listen to them anymore. You know, they, they're, they're, they're liars. They're liars. They're wicked. And, and they're trying to brainwash hum, humanity. And, uh, and uh, so, you know, but there are some good news sources, new, Newsmax maybe, or uh, Truth Social, or Flashpoint, and, and uh, you know, uh, CBN, you know, Pat Robertson made it to heaven finally. God bless him. I was hoping he would be able to go to heaven. And he made it. Praise the Lord. 93 years old. And, but, you know, uh, that kind of news is more trustworthy. But it still, is, no matter how you report the news, it can, it can depress you. It can anger you. And then we s sit around talking about stuff. And everybody knows something that, you know, you know and everybody putting in their two cents worth. Uh, it, can, it, can, it can get you off your peace. Yes, sir. And we shouldn't allow things to disturb our peace. Amen. Jesus said, you know, I, I've spoken to you that you might have peace. When we hear from him, it brings peace. His words still the storm. Remember when he got up and just said a couple words and the storm died down? That's what needs to happen to us daily. When we get before the Lord, no matter what's going on in the world around us, no matter how much corruption there is in our government, no matter how evil Target is, no matter what's going on out there, we hear from God. We let God speak His peace into our lives. That's, that's that whole idea of trusting the Lord. See, I, I'm, I'm going to trust America to the Lord. I'm going to trust... Hollywood to the Lord. I'm going to trust. A, there are a lot of things that if I focus on it and meditate on it, it disturbs my peace. That doesn't mean I don't do anything about it. I write my congressmen. I write my senators. I call. You know, I, I'll I'll do I'll do my duty, my due diligence as a citizen. But at some point, I've got to cast the care of it the anxiety of it over on the Lord so that I can live in peace. Amen. Amen. And so, uh, so you know, by, by living by faith, we live in victory. Faith equals victory. Uh, 1 John 5, 4 says, Whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Our faith in what? In God. Amen? Not our faith in the Republican Party. Not our faith in, in a, a certain politician. Not our faith in ourselves. But our faith in God is what gives us the victory over the world. Isn't that great? By faith, victory is ours. We need to get to a point where we can taste it and feel it. Even in the polluted air around us but we know that even in the darkest hour there's a dawn coming praise god hallelujah who is he that overcometh the world first john 5 5 who is he that overcometh the world but he that believeth that jesus is the son of god when you believe that jesus is everything jesus said he is you're going to have an, a world overcoming faith. Amen. Hallelujah. There's no God like our God. No high like the most high. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so we want to live a life then that it's empowered by the Holy Spirit. Because He has made provision to give us the same access 
to victory, to peace, and to an uh, overwhelming sense of calm through our relationship with Him by the Holy Spirit. Look in 1 Corinthians 2.16. He says, Who has known the mind of the Lord that we may instruct Him? But we have the mind of Christ. It doesn't say we're going to get it someday. He says we have it. Well, what does that mean? It means I have access to God's thought process. I can start thinking like God thinks. How does God think about Goliath? How does God think about communism? How does God think about all these things that would disturb us if we meditate on them? How, what, what does God do? What, you know what God does? He laughs at them. He laughs at them. And He's already, he's already planned and provided for their defeat. They're going down. In God's mind, they've already gone down. And He's just bringing it to pass. And so uh, when we begin to access the mind of Christ, we begin to look at things in this world from His perspective. Well, in His perspective, there's no mountain nor valley. It's just all flat. You know what I'm saying? There's no uphill for God. There's no downhill for God. Amen. God's not intimidated by staircases like me. I, 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 we went up, Ruth mentioned that, that chapel on the side of the hill there in Sedona, you know, and uh, there was a ramp and then there were steps. And the ramp just kind of, you know, went around like that. And, you know, I, I'm getting, we're getting ready to walk up there and I'm, I'm studying it. Do I really want to go up there? And then, you know, of course, she took off, so I, I, I took off, and uh, we made it. Made it all the way to the top, and and uh, made it all the way back down. Praise God. Going back down, my knees felt a little rubbery, but, you know, we we were, uh, we were made it. And there were a lot of places like that, steps. And, you know, it's like being in Nepal, you know, every just steps everywhere, steps, steps, and and sometimes the steps were just rocks that rocked while you stepped on them. You know, it's just, but you know, it makes you stronger. But it's, it might be intimidating for us, but it's not for God. If we start thinking like God thinks, we think all things are possible. Those are, those are the kind of thoughts you think when you think with the mind of Christ. All things are possible. Nothing is impossible with God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, people who uh, are full of doubt, and faithless, um, guess what's going to happen? They're going to produce, you know, in that in that soil of of fear and doubt. They're they're going to, they're going to produce uh, uh, depression, anxiety, grief. There's going to be all kinds of debilitating emotions that's going to make them sick and it's going to cause their hearts to fail them so we need to we need to not be people who lack spiritual courage Amen. why do they lack spiritual courage because they don't know god's word they don't know what god says about it they don't know what god thinks about it and therefore they've got no personal relationship with him so if you don't know his word how can you relate to it he is the Word made flesh. And and so they've also not provided the, themselves an environment to grow. And I mean, and I'm talking about growing in Christ and becoming rooted and grounded in Christ in, in a spiritual environment. In order for you to grow spiritually, you've got to you've got to shut yourself up with God. Get alone with him, get in his word and open your heart to everything He has for you. Christians who do not discipline themselves to spend quantity time with the Lord every day are going to find themselves overwhelmed and overcome. They're not going to be overcomers. It's always amazed me and bewildered me that Christians, Jesus 
professing believers would kill themselves. But it happens. It happens. I've known some. And it just blows me away. And you begin to wonder, well, was there some chemical imbalance? Was it, uh, uh, did they just have Alzheimer's or something and they forget who they were? I mean, what's going on? But the, the, uh, the best preventative medicine for depression and things like that would cause you to self-destruct is for you to spend quality time with Jesus in his word every day. Paul said, I pray without ceasing. What does that mean? It means I'm constantly in communion and connecting to him. You can do it. And I'm not talking about one of these guys that just casually says, oh yeah, I pray all the time. I'm just always praying. And uh, yeah, But you spend a little time with them and you don't, you don't see them praying. You don't hear any prayers. You don't see any twinkle in the eye would even indicate they're praying silently. There's a difference between saying you do it and doing it. Amen. Meditate on the things of God day and night, God told Joshua. If you would meditate on my word day and night, you would have good success and you'll make your way prosperous. Well, Joshua did. How do I know he did? Because he had good success and made his way prosperous. Amen. And God wants you to be prosperous in all that you set your hands to do. And then I want to, I want to, I want to close with Matthew 25. And uh, th this is, uh, I was thinking along these lines, and I was thinking, you know, uh, where are we in, in the church today? And, uh, and I, I see us here. We're almost at the end of the race. We're almost going to see the culmination of everything we've ever hoped for and believed for and it's called the it's called the wedding the marriage supper it's called it's called when the bride and the bridegroom get together amen matthew 25 verse 1 says then shall the kingdom of heaven be like unto ten virgins he's talking about the kingdom of heaven and he, he says the kingdom of heaven is like this so we're not talking about the world. We're not talking about the heathen. We're talking about the kingdom of heaven. We're talking about believers. And then he says, it should be likened unto ten virgins. They were all virgins. They were all pure. They were part of the bridal party. They were all invited. They were all dressed for the wedding. But they took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were wise and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. All they had was the oil that was in their lamp. And that's not enough. Amen. That's, that's like when Adam Culp and some of his friends hopped on some motorcycles and took off up the mountain and forgot to take extra gas. Guess what? It wasn't long. They were looking for gas. Amen. You, you've got to make sure you've got enough oil for the journey. Folks, we are living a journey. Life is many times compared to a journey. And we're sojourners. That means we, we are here for the, the long haul. Amen. And you've got to have enough fuel to make it all the way. We don't want to just get to the door of the wedding and not be able to go in. Are you hearing me? Five were wise, five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept, and at midnight there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. And then all of those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so. 
lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch ye therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Oh, yeah. you know, th this is an amazing parable because all of these are virgins. All were invited. They were all dressed and waiting for the bridegroom to come. But half of them, not only did they not make it into the wedding, but the bridegroom denied knowing them. That's serious. That's heartbreaking. And what, but what was the difference between the wise and the foolish? The wise made sure they had plenty of oil. They stayed ready. They stayed prepared. They had, they had oil in their lamps. They had, they had extra oil. And their lamps never went out, never ran out of oil. And so when it came time to go in, they were ready to go in. The others had to go back and get more oil. They had to go pray through. They had to go get a, a, a fresh baptism or so, you know, of, of God's oil in their life. And in the process, they became not only disbarred, but disowned. Disbarred and disowned. What does this tell me? It tells me I need to always check my oil. Amen. Amen. Always check my oil. Make sure I've always got oil because I don't want to burn it up. I don't want to burn it all out. I don't want to run out of God's peace, of God's joy. of God. See, the oil represents the Holy Spirit presence in your life. It's the anointing oil. And, and, the, and the oil, one of the one of the main purposes of the oil, uh, or two of the main purposes, one is is fuel for power, and the other one is is so that we can bear the right fruit. Amen. Amen. So if there's no joy in my life, if there's no peace in my life, if there's no uh, long suffering in my life, if I'm irritable, if I'm angry, if I, if there's no love in my life, then all that all that says is that I've let my oil supply run low and we're always running across people in the church in christianity that are uh, are, are running dangerously low on oil they're not being filled with the holy spirit daily they're they're, they're not topping off their tank you know it, it's a whole lot safer to go through life topping off your tank than it is to let your tank run dry. Everybody knows if you let your gas tank run dry, then you're going to start sucking up all the dirt that's at the bottom of your tank. And I think a lot of Christians are sucking up dirt because they don't top off. Amen. Now I'm one of these guys. I don't. I don't like letting my gas tank get low. If our gas tank gets around a half. We go, we go fill it up. And when it, when it, when it shuts off, I, I, I can squeeze an extra couple of dollars worth of gas in there. You know, I mean, I, I top it off. Now they say they got a little sticker right on there, don't top off your tank. And I think, well, the reason for that is they don't want it spilling over and, you know, sloshing out. But I'm going to, I'm going to leave here and I'm going to go down the road and burn some gas. And so, I want this thing to still stay full when I get home. That's right. You know what I'm saying? And so I just, I, I fill it up and then I fill it up some more until it just won't take anymore. I, yeah, I'm one of those guys on the other side of the pump going click, 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 click. Another reason I like to fill it up uh, uh, before it gets too low is because it doesn't cost me as much. Now, I know I'm spending the same amount of money, 
but it doesn't hurt me as bad. You know, to pay to pay twenty five dollars than to pay seventy five dollars. You know what I'm saying? Does anybody live in the same world I do? Huh? But spiritually, if you top off, it won't take you so long to be full. And you'll never run dangerously low. You'll never be panicking looking for the next gas station and hoping you didn't pass the last one. Wisdom says fill up and do it regularly. So every day, every day, I get in the Word. Every day, I fellowship with Jesus. And every day, I pray in the Spirit. And make sure that I've that, that I've I've drunk enough to stay full, because I don't know when it's going to be my last opportunity, and I sure don't want to run out because I don't want to be disappointed. Amen. And and doing it just on Sunday morning that's not enough, because this, this, like I said, this world is so disturbed, so so chaotic, so messed up. That, that just you dealing with it all week requires you to fill up every day. You need to full, fill your tanks with Holy Ghost oil every day so you can make it not just through that day, but some extra. Amen. Praise God. You never know when you're going to be called on to raise the dead or to cast out a devil <laughs> or to go to a wedding. Let's be wise. Can you say amen? amen? Let's be wise. Why? Because we don't know the day of the hour. But we do know he's coming. Amen. Praise the Lord. Bow your heads with me and let's let's just